Chief Meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell is here once again for the very, very, I, listen, I love this segment. Ask Shannon, it's always a good time. Uh, you have a lot of questions come in tonight, so you right. ready for them? I'm ready. Hit me up. Okay, here we go. Florence <laughs> wants to know, does winter fog only happen in the PNW and what causes it? And what causes it? Absolutely not. It is a global issue, you okay. know, when things get very calm and quiet. So let's dive into, in particular, why winter fog happens. And you often hear me say that we get the rain soaking into the soil right. and then it comes back out and gets us a second time in the form of some fog. And that is called radiation fog. And that's because on a clear night, after we have soaked the soil, this can happen in Seattle, in Boise, in Portland, in Amsterdam, in Sydney, Australia, okay. just about anywhere where you've got the winter conditions and it's cold, it starts to coax that moisture back out of the surface and then it settles in and gets really thick and hangs around. So it has been a problem. Boy, I'd kind of forgotten about that. I don't know how that New Year's Eve started out that yeah. way. It was so murky. It was still a wonderful time. <laughs> Great crowd. I was one of many underneath the needle. But yeah, it was kind of hard to see out there because we were in that thick blanket. And remember earlier in the day when we were getting ready for that fireworks show, right. some of the pictures coming in, you could see the needle sticking out of the top yeah. and then all the fog down below. So yeah, we get it here a lot, but it can happen just about anywhere. Okay, good to know. And I love this graphic. This really paints a good picture for Yes. Yeah. All right, big question here from James. Are we expecting more fog in the coming months? You know, as long as it stays clear like this, anything can go. So, yeah, at least in the short term here, we've got some of that fog developing tonight. And here's the particular pattern we have right now. To really get the fog to stick around, you need to kind of put a lid on it. And we've got that lid in the form of a giant ridge of high pressure, a mega ridge hanging out along the eastern Pacific. So right over the west coast here, it's very stubborn. Once yeah. this pattern gets set up, it does not want to give up its spot. And in fact, it's just going to double down over the weekend. So chances are we're going to have to deal with some more of this fog. Um, the question before said, does this just happen in the Seattle area? Right. No, but we're actually in a really favored spot because of our topography. We're in what I always talk about as kind of a natural bowl here. Lucky us, it's beautiful. Yeah. We've got the Olympics to one side, the Cascades to the other. But when we do get that winter fog forming, like we showed you in the last graphic, gets trapped okay. and we just don't have enough wind you need you know something to stir that foggy soup you need the wind that kind of acts like the big spoon in mm -hmm. the pot of soup but here between the mountain ranges it doesn't happen it gets caught and stuck and we get this pattern this is what a wintertime inversion is by the way specifically it is where the weather is totally upside down because you think oh I'm going to the mountains it's getting cooler right. as I go higher we all learned that when we were kids right it gets colder if you go up skiing and whatnot when you have a wintertime inversion especially around here with our specific Pacific topography, it is totally cattywampus backwards and it's foggy and murky and chilly down below. And the ski slopes, like yesterday, they were around 60 degrees oh and sunny. And you know, it's melting off the snowpack a little yeah. bit. So yeah, this is very much going to be the case through the weekend. Going to get murky at times down below. The, the fog, by the way, kind of ebbs and flows and does stir around like soup. So that's okay. why you see it come and go from different spots. But up above, those volcanic peaks will be lovely and shining in the sun throughout the course of the weekend. You know, that brings us to our next question here from Phil. How will the warm winter impact our annual snowpack? Yeah, we're all kind of getting a little nervous about that, right? Yeah. So let's see where we're sitting in terms of snowpack right now. And by the way, we are not alone. Also in this worry about the snowpack boat, uh, Breckenridge, Vale, Aspen, the Snowbird, uh, the entire Intermountain West are starting to oh, really uh, ring the alarm bell saying, where is our mountain snow? Especially if, you know, that's the whole economy right. in some of those little ski towns getting worried. We don't have the snow around Leavenworth either that we normally have mm -hmm. with all of our lights with our little snow globe city there, the Bavaria and Cascadia, we call it. Uh, here's where we're looking specifically, other than kind of that anomaly around the BC border, because some of the high country of the Cascades got a lot of snow during the atmospheric river in December. So they are right. sitting a little prettier up high. The rest of us are about where you'd think. We're at about 50%, give or take a few. That sounds about right, right? Because we got a blast last week. We right. got that two to four feet. We were all excited. And now it's gone totally quiet again. So we're sitting at 50%. We want to try to, you know, I like to get over 75, 80% just to feel pretty good about it. Yeah. You know, it's January 15th today. There's a long winter to go. So we'll see what we see here in the next couple of months. Okay. Well, we have a question from Scott who wants to know, 
how much snow do we need to get to avoid a drought this summer? Right. A drought, you know, is technically about how much water you've got. We're, we're really good around here about hanging on to it and keeping it in the reservoirs, letting it ebb and flow as needed. Yeah. And, you know, we're a rainy corner of the country. We do okay. But you can see, at least in the short term, you know, I don't like long-range forecasts. Right. We've talked True. about this. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this. But, you know, you get 8 to 14 days out. That's still at least within range. You okay. know, when we go these three-month outlooks, that's such a wash. It can go either way. But at least the longer range models for the next two weeks are looking promising. And in fact, on my seven-day forecast tonight, we cloud up Tuesday, yeah. next Wednesday and Thursday, it starts to rain, a la mountain snow. For late January anyway, and the signal's pretty uh, good for this, it does look like we finally get back to normal and we start running a little cooler and a little bit more damp than usual. Okay. So, you know, that's how the atmosphere works. It's a big teeter-totter, it ebbs and flows. And final note, I remember tweeting about this in 2019 in January yeah. about all of the daffodils coming up in my yard. If you remember, February of 2019 was the snow that would not quit. It snowed for a couple of weeks. We had one of the snowiest wow. months on record ever in Seattle daffodils and all so anything can happen and we'll keep you posted along the way a lot of winter still left yeah a lot of winter left to go we'll see how we do all right Shannon thank you of course all right